maintenance. Generally, there are two types of computers. Desktop or personal computer and laptop. Nowadays, tablet PCs or tabs for short are also quite popular. Functions of a computer A computer performs five major functions irrespective of its size. It accepts data or instructions by way of input. It processes data as required by the user. It stores data. It gives results in the form of output. It controls all operations inside the computer. Basic organization of a computer is as shown in this block diagram. Input unit, central processing unit, output unit. The input unit helps to enter the data and programs into a computer system in an organized manner. Keyboard, mouse, camera and scanner are some of the input devices. The central processing unit performs operations like arithmetic and logical operations and stores data and instructions. Typically, the central processing unit or CPU looks like this. It has many ports in the front and at the back of the unit. We will learn about them in a little while. It takes data and instructions, processes them and gives the output or results. The task of performing operations is called processing. The output is then stored along with the data and instructions in the storage unit. The unit that supports the process of producing results from the data is the output unit. Monitor and printer are some of the output devices. Generally, a desktop computer has four main components. Monitor, CPU, keyboard and mouse. A camera, printer or scanner can also be connected to a computer. This is the monitor or the computer screen as we call it. It looks like a TV screen. It is a visual display unit of a computer. It displays the computer's user interface. One can open various programs and interact with the computer using the keyboard and mouse. The keyboard is designed to enter text, characters and other commands into a computer. This is the computer mouse. Typically, it has two clickable buttons and a scroll button in between. Pressing the left mouse button activates most actions. Pressing the right mouse button activates more non-standard actions like shortcuts. The mouse wheel is used to scroll up and down by rolling the scroll button. The computer mouse is an alternative way to interact with the computer besides the keyboard. Now let us see the various parts of the CPU. There is a prominent button on the front of the CPU which is the power on switch. To turn on the computer, one needs to press this switch. There is a reset button too which helps us to restart the computer if required. Also on the front side, you will notice two or more USB ports and a DVD CD-ROM reader writer. The USB ports are used to connect pen drives to the computer and the DVD CD-ROM reader writer is used to read or write a CD or DVD. Now let's look at the back of the computer. The ports at the back are used for connecting the CPU to the other devices of the computer. This is done using cables. There are many components inside the CPU. When the computer is on, all these components work and generate heat. Fans at the back provide the airflow required to cool the components. 
Otherwise, overheating can cause damage to the CPU, often leading to data loss. This is the case cooling fan. It keeps the temperature of the CPU normal and prevents overheating. Power supply unit, also called PSU, supplies power to the computer. Now, let's learn how to connect the various components to the CPU. Place all the components on the table as shown. Place all the cables on the table as shown. First, let's connect the monitor to the CPU. Connect the power cable to the monitor as shown. Now connect the other end to a power supply socket. This is the power cable of the CPU. Connect it to the CPU as shown. Then connect it to a power supply socket. Next, connect the keyboard cable to the CPU as shown. The port for the keyboard is usually purple in color. You can connect the mouse to the port which is green in color. Alternately, you can connect the USB keyboard and mouse to any of the USB ports. The remaining USB ports can be used for connecting pen drive, hard disk, etc. This is a LAN cable and this is a LAN port. It is a wired connection that allows a computer to connect to a network. The other end of the LAN cable is connected to a modem or a Wi-Fi router. You will learn about configuring Wi-Fi connections in another tutorial. The LED light will blink when the LAN port is active and receiving activity. You may notice that there are other serial ports on the CPU. These are used for connecting PDAs, modem or other serial devices. You will also notice that there are some parallel ports on the CPU. These are used for connecting devices like printer, scanner, etc. Now let's look at the audio jacks. The port in pink is used for connecting a microphone. The port in blue is for connecting a line-in, for example, from a radio or tape player. The port in green is for connecting headphone or speaker or line-out. Now that we have connected all our devices, let's turn on the computer. First of all, switch on the power supply buttons of the monitor and the CPU. Now, press the power on button on the monitor and then press the power on switch on the front of the CPU. Usually you will see a string of words on a black screen when your computer first turns on. This is the BIOS system displaying information about the computer's central processing unit, information about how much memory the computer has, and information about the hard disk drives and floppy disk drives. BIOS is the software which gives the CPU its first instructions when the computer is turned on. The whole process of loading the operating system is called booting the computer. When all the necessary checks are done, you will see the operating system's interface. If you are an Ubuntu Linux user, you will see this screen. And if you are a Windows user, you will see this screen. Now, let us briefly look at a laptop. Laptops are portable and compact computers. A laptop is small and light enough to fit on a person's lap while in use. Hence, it is called a laptop. It has most of the same components as a desktop computer, including a display, a keyboard, a touchpad, which is a pointing and navigating device, a CD-DVD reader-writer, and mic and speakers built into a single unit. It also has a LAN port and USB ports. There is a video port using which one can connect a projector to the laptop. The audio jacks are easily identifiable with respective icons for mic and headphones. This is the inbuilt cooling fan in the laptop. This helps to keep the laptop from overheating. A laptop is powered by electricity via an AC adapter and has a rechargeable battery. Hence, it is portable and can be used away from a power source. 
Let us summarize. 